Open world games have seen huge improvements since they were first introduced to the public. Games like Far Cry, Zelda Breath of the Wild, Minecraft and many more revolutionize what an open world game can be and how the players experience it. However, out of the all top 10 best open world games in YouTube and Reddit, one game is not often mentioned, even if its open world is spectacular, genuine in its design and creative in its approach. Today, the reviewers were taking a flight to Japan to explore Yakuza's Kamurocho and learning what makes it so amazing. But first, roll the intro. There are many different expectations players have for their ideal open world game, and there are certainly a lot of different approaches that make every map unique. In today's video, I'd like to take a look at Yakuza's open world, a shining example on how it has innovated how we think about the genre. What can open world games learn from the Yakuza series? Yakuza is a game series that made its debut in 2005 and now is an established series with 7 mainline games and several spin-offs. I didn't play them all, but I did play a lot of Yakuza 0, a prequel released in 2015. The interesting thing is that all the games are set in a very specific place, Kamurocho, Tokyo, based in the real-life district of Kabuchiko, known to be the capital's red light district. From Theater Square to Tekaichi Street to the Champions District, all games in the franchise basically have the same explorable map, usually with minor differences, and in the case of prequel, time error. At first glance, the world of looks small. And yes, in terms of square miles, it is, by a long shot. If we take Novigrad from The Witcher 3 as an example, not only that city is bigger, but the city itself is only a fraction of the immense world the game is set in, and The Witcher 3 itself is not even a big open world game compared to other titles. Point is that yes, Kamurocho is pretty small. Some may think that fans would hate the fact that all games are set in the same six streets. However, they clearly don't. So what's the real deal? You see, dear viewers, game worlds aren't always about how big they are, but also how the devs use them. Kamurocho is no generic video game city, where the buildings all look the same and where the shopkeepers sell the same merch around town. No, 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 here in Yakuza, everything has a purpose. Here's a map of the district again. Do you see all those colored buildings? Those are places where you can go and do an extreme variety of things. You can play bowling, you can sing karaoke, you can play darts, pool, race an ultron, and do many, many more activities. Even the restaurants in these games have all unique foods and drinks. The amount of details there is for every location in Tokyo is simply astonishing. And don't get me started on all the side missions you can do. Let's just say that if you're looking to do everything around here, you're going to play more than 100 hours to achieve it all. In short, Yakuza's map is extremely dense in both details and things to do. There are hundreds of options available and the city never feels repetitive nor old. Kamurocho and also other locations in the franchise such as Sodenbori Osaka are rich with things to do. All these activities are here not because they are essential for the story, after all this is a plot driven game, but because they are key for immersion. You as a player want to experience what the city offers and you want to roam around the streets of Tokyo. When you see a building, more often than not it has a purpose in the ecosystem of the capital, and it brings life to the virtual world you are playing in. Also, think about it this way. All seven games of the main franchise are set in Kamurocho. From the PS2 to the PS4, the design of the city hasn't changed at all. But not a single review claims this to be a bad aspect of the game, even if on paper it sounds monotonous at best and cheap at worst. Could you think a game like... Um, I don't know, Assassin's Creed, always set in the same exact city for over 7 games? It would be madness! The players would probably get tired of it real fast. Yet, the way the developers use Kamurocho as a playground to try out many different activities and side missions in every title makes Yakuza's open world so iconic that it needs not to be changed. Now, it is extremely important that I stress out the fact that not all open world games have the same focus, thus not all open games can or should be like Yakuza's. However, this doesn't mean that future titles can't borrow ideas from it. For starters, there are so many games that have too many empty spaces around the map. Games like Just Cause sure offer a thousand kilometers of playground, but cities feel identical and there aren't so many activities to do. 
I love the game, don't get me wrong, but when going from point A to point B, it feels that nothing, it's in between. Games should learn to diversify their region and give purpose and meaning to most buildings and places of interest, to utilize them up for the gameplay and not just as a test field. Another thing open world games could learn from Yakuza is to make submissions more spontaneous. Usually, in open world games such as Borderlands, players go to a board or talk to someone with a big exclamation mark above their heads and collect a secondary mission. This method works, but kinda defeats the purpose of exploring and finding missions along the way. In Yakuza, you roam around the map, hear someone talking or see an odd event going on, and just like that, a sub story begins. In this way, the player is more motivated to walk around the city to find things to do, rather than going to the same person to collect requests. Finally, I would really like to see open world games give much more detail to the individual location the player visits. Now, I know this is a huge requirement that not all game studios can focus on if their maps are extremely big, but it would still be very interesting if titles started giving names to streets and buildings, for instance. Increasing the detail on the individual pieces of the map truly expands the player's interest of exploring them and integrate himself within the world the devs created. It would be truly spectacular to see in upcoming games such as Cyberpunk 2077 a true realistic city where most places have a purpose and most streets have an aim. There are many open world games out there that would benefit from all the suggestions made in this video. However, there is one in particular that demonstrates how all of them can come into play. That game being 2K Mafia 2. This title is a perfect example on how not to do a forced open world game and how it could have been fantastic if only followed this video's tips. Both Yakuza and Mafia are heavy story driven games, but the latter is set in a big open world city that is empty of things to do. You literally have nothing to do when going from mission to mission. Nothing at all. Nada. Zero. Locations are barely unique, there aren't sub-stories or extra missions to do, and above all, Mafia 2 is an open world game where there is no world. Do you imagine instead a Mafia 2 that played more like a Yakuza game? This title could have been set uniquely in Italy, Italy and, a part of the awesome Mafia Craft story, it could also have contained many side activities like playing Italian card games, go to the cinema, head to a cabaret and much more. Enhancing the world in the case of Mafia 2 would have been the difference between a mediocre game and a masterpiece. There are a gazillion of different ways to make an open world, and it is truly impressive how every software company is able to find its own twist to the formula. Yakuza may not be the game many think when thinking open world games, but I assure you that Kamurocho is more than a hub. I hope in the future games will have much more personality, detail and things to do to the player, and I'm looking forward to see if my wishes will be accomplished. If you made it so far, thank you so much for your attention. I loved the Yakuza series when I first played it and I had to do a video about it. Let me know what you think about the series down in the comments below, and like and subscribe if you want more original content. Having said that, I will think I'm heading off for some more karaoke than in Pink Street North. See you in the next video! Bye bye.